Hello, respective viewers. I am George from Ireland. So I am outside Duleep Singh's house in London. This street is called Holland Park. Not Holland Park Street, simply Holland Park. Um, then there's the actual park of Holland Park behind that building, about half a mile away. And the whole plush area is known as Holland Park. You can tell by the size of the house that it is an extremely expensive uh, and desirable area. They're, they're all built in this uh, late 19th century style. Anyway, Duleep Singh was born in um, Punjab in uh, 1838. Uh, the Sikh Empire was then independent. It was adjacent to the territory of the British East India Company. Um, there had already been one Anglo-Sikh war, then there was another one. The thing is, the East India Company had its own army, which was separate to the British Army. But the British Army was also in India. So sometimes the East India Company was at war, but the United Kingdom was not. Then it came to the second Anglo-Sikh war. I'm not sure of the causes of that. Anyway, it was a British victory. And uh, when the East India Company was fighting, obviously most of its soldiers were Indian. Um, so the, the, the Sikhs were uh, defeated. Not all the Sikhs lived in the Sikh Empire, and plenty of people in the Sikh Empire were not Sikh. There were Hindus and Muslims there. At some point, the Sikh Empire had, had extended through what's now Pakistan deep into what's now Afghanistan, which is why there's a Sikh community in, in, in Afghanistan to this day. Most of them sought refuge in this country. The Sikh community in the UK has taken them under its wing. Um, so when, when Dulip Singh was five, his father died and he became the Maharaja of the Sikh Empire. So his um, mother, um, Jind Kaur, had to uh, act as regent. So she ruled on his behalf. Um, there was a second Anglo-Sikh war and one of the terms of that is that he would be taken under British tutelage. So um, he didn't meet his family very much under, uh, after that time. He was Britannicized. He attained absolute mastery of the English language and his Punjabi, well, he gradually forgot. I don't think he forgot it totally. I'm not sure he'd ever learned to write Punjabi because he'd been taken away um, before about the age one would learn to, to read and write. Uh, so he was brought to this country after some years and he was very cordially received by um, Queen Victoria. Uh, he'd been uh, tutored by um, Christian missionaries, priests of the Church of England. And then at the age of 14, he converted to the Christian faith. He later seemed to fight an inner battle about that, be plagued with guilt about this one and he eventually reconverted to, to the faith of his ancestors. So um, he was uh, received at Windsor Castle, at Buckingham Palace, St James's Palace, other places. Um, the, the Prince Consort, that's Albert, Queen Victoria's husband, was very fond of him and um, he was um, about the same age as some of her children because uh, they were born from 1840 onwards, so slightly older than the, than the Princess Royal, as in Queen Victoria's eldest uh, daughter and um, Edward VII, the future king, her eldest son. Um, so he went to Scotland a lot and uh, he was very good friends with the Scots noble family. Uh, he was known as the Black Prince of Perthshire as opposed to the Black Prince who was an English historical figure in the 14th century. Perthshire being a county in Scotland. Uh, so yeah, he was British in his sartorial fashion and everything else. Um, that there was an Indian community in London at the time, but it was absolutely minuscule. Would have been perhaps one in 10,000 people. Such people would have been considered a curiosity. I'm not aware there was any hostility towards them. There was later racism towards Indians in this country from the 1950s onwards, but that's when they started to acquire critical mass to be a significant number, and um, the racists felt threatened. They're taking over, even when Indians weren't even 1% of the UK population. But when they were 0.01%, nobody said that they were so many that they posed some sort of existential challenge to the, to the white majority. Anyhow, um, so he married twice um, a, a woman who was half Ethiopian, half German, and he had several children with her. Then he had a relationship um, with um, a woman, who, a British woman, but she claimed to be a French and a princess, but that was a lie. She was his mistress. I don't think he married her, but he had two children with her as well. Anyway, he had several children with his wife, um, but they were brought up in, in Christianity, and they had Christian names such as Sophia, um, uh, Catherine, Victor, Frederick, and so forth. Two of his boys went to Eton, and I remember seeing the memorial to them there. I don't think they distinguished themselves greatly in later life. So um, he later wrote to his mother, who was living in Kathmandu for some reason. I'm not sure if, um, just to make sure there'd be no uh, insurrection, perhaps the uh, East India Company authority said, it's better send the Maharaja away and the Dowager Maharani elsewhere, 
uh, to Nepal. Um, so he wanted he wanted to visit her. So he was brought back in 1860 um, uh, to visit his mother, but um, she died in 1863. He wanted to go back for um, her um, funeral, so that was done. But the thing is, how do they preserve the body long enough for him to get out there? It's going to take weeks to 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 to, to sail. I mean, you can embalm a body. I'm not sure that was acceptable. They didn't have morgues in those days. But anyway, her cremation took place, 1863, and then returned to this country. So he was he was lionized by London society. Um, but he wasn't doing very much, was uh, Roi Fainéant, um, and then um, voiced the desire to return to his homeland, perhaps to rule his Maharaja once again. Because remember, there were um, 565 princely states, some of them gigantic, Hyderabad in South India, the size of France, some of them minuscule, just larger states, most of them in between, and um, rule a princely state uh, and do what he wanted within his state, so long as he didn't upset um, British India, um, he, could, he could have done that. But I think uh, by this stage, the Punjab was British India, directly administered by British district commissioners. So perhaps they, they, did, they didn't want to do that. Anyway, um, he decided he was going to return to his homeland, so uh, he took ship and was stopped at Aden. That uh, was a British-ruled port on the coast of, of Yemen. And by this time, the British authorities had realized that and stopped and said, no, you can't go, and re required him to return to Europe. Because I think, again, that was one of the terms of uh, the uh, surrender, that um, the Sikhs could largely do what they wanted, carry on as before, but very, with a stipulation that he must go, he's only allowed back when the British want and under their superintendence. Um, so in Aden he reconverted to, to the faith of his forebears. So he returned to the United Kingdom and did not accomplish a great deal. He was very wealthy, donated to some charities in Thetford where he's um, happily remembered with, with an equestrian statue. So he died, if memory serves, in 1893. Um, and none of his children had any children, so that the line died with him. So that is Duleep Singh, since somebody was asking me about him. Um, it's a very um, a smart street. The Norwegian Students Association is there. They want to use the accommodation. There's a bit of the Ukrainian embassy down this way. You'll see a Ukrainian flag behind me. Perhaps you can see it. And the, the embassy of Uzbekistan is up there. In, in the 1980s, the um, Soviet embassy had some accommodation here. Not the embassy, but a residence for some of its diplomats just up this street. Um, is the Oleg Gordievsky, um, what, what would the word be? Fiasco, um, story, involves this street. That's enough for me. Follow me on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook. And um, book guided tours of London with me when tourism reopens. And what's the other thing? Oh yes, yeah, see my channel, British Poesy. I put links into some of me, some of my, my videos declaiming poetry on my other channel. Um, choose online lessons with me in history, politics, religious studies, uh, geography, debating, um, French, law. Toodaloo.